Good. All right. And start your timer. Camera has a timer. Okay, excellent. All right. I'm going to talk to you today about Lucky Jim, what I'm calling an important academic satire. And it was written by an author by the name of Kingsley Amos. I'll get a little preview here about what I'm going to do in this talk. And I'm going to tell you first about the author and then about the period of time when this novel was written. I'm going to talk about the university setting because that is particularly important to this novel. And then I'm going to summarize the novel very briefly. And then what I'll do is I'm going to defend the claim that this is an important academic satire. I can tell you what the critics have said and then explain if it's so important, why did I not assign it in this class and then end up with my recommendations. So this is Kingsley Amos. He's born in the 20s. He lives until the 90s. He's a novelist. He's a poet. He's a critic. He wrote about 20 novels. And he attended, he was a member of what's called the Angry Young Men Movement. And we're going to talk about that on a later slide and why that is somehow relevant to this novel. Uh, he went to uh, one school as a, uh, on scholarship. And then he admitted to St. John's uh, College, Oxford, on scholarship. So what this is telling me is he's not a member of the wealthy elite, but he is a member of the academic elite. And that becomes relevant when we talk about him being an angry young man. I joined the Communist Party in 1941 in Britain. This is not too weird a thing to be doing, basically. Uh, fascism is on the rise in Germany and Italy and Spain, etc. So the Brits were somewhat socialistic. It wasn't terribly weird to become a communist. Um, he serves in World War II, and then he leaves the Communist Party in 1956, which is a uh, time uh, when a lot of people were, because by this time they understood what Stalin was like and what he was doing. And then he published Lucky Jim in 1954. It was both a popular success and a critical success. Okay, so the setting of the time, the war has just ended in Europe. And what we have is England is almost destroyed, and their empire is pretty much unsustainable. They can no longer be what they were like before World War II. A lot of British soldiers died. A lot of British soldiers are coming back, and they have physical wounds, and they have psychological wounds. Okay? And many of the political, economic, and class structures that define British society before the war were becoming unstable. And this often happens when you have these great sort of cataclysmic events. Okay, the red brick university is important. Oxford and Cambridge are their sort of ancient Ivy League universities. Later on, they started these universities in the industrial centers that were not about the stuff that Oxford and Cambridge were about, but were more about civic science and engineering colleges. So if you think the difference between an Ivy League university and a state college or a state university, et cetera. So these other universities, they're fine universities, but they're not the prestige place that Oxford and Cambridge is. Now, Kingsley Amos, he attended Oxford, so he knows about that kind of university. The summary, you've got this Jim Dixon, and he's a medieval history, history lecturer, and he's in one of these red brick universities. He's in a little university that's not that prestigious, maybe like some of the universities we saw in the novels that we read. And basically, he's trying to get tenure. So he wants to get tenure. He's going to kiss up to his department head, OK? And he's going to publish something. Well, he publishes something. He sends it to an editor. That unscrupulous editor takes it and translates it into another language and submits it as his own work to another journal. So basically, that didn't work out. He's got an ambiguous relationship with an emotionally unstable colleague who, early in the novel, in terms she has unsuccessfully attempted suicide. And so, well, this is pretty weird. This is some heavy stuff, not normally the stuff that you have in a comic novel. Um, uh, his uh, department head holds this musical week weekend. And Jim Dixon gets drunk and ends up burning a hole in some bedding and destroying some furniture because he falls asleep with a lit cigarette. So his efforts at uh, sort of impressing his uh, boss are not working well. During the weekend, he meets this Christine Callahan, who as far as he's concerned, she is a woman sort of out of his league, right? And she is dating the son of the department head. And the son is this total poser. Uh, he thinks he's an artist, and he's just really pretentious. So Jim Dixon basically is attracted to Christine. He's scheduled to deliver this uh, presentation called Mary England at the end of the term. And we're going to watch a little video about how that works out. Eventually, we learn that his colleague's suicide attempt was actually faked. And Christine leaves the poser. And Christine and Jim are able to become a happy couple. And by this time, it's obvious that Jim has no future in the academy. So the first thing we're going to look at is the madrigal scene. So this is the musical weekend at the professor's 
So, why does Lucky Jim matter? It was the first modern satire, and it articulated a widespread discontent with the younger generation who felt that the people who were in charge were the wrong people. It spawned a tremendous flurry of campus novels at a time when a lot more people were going to college, and it set a high bar for biting satire about privilege and stuffy old school society. What the critics said, Time Magazine said it was one of the 100 best language, uh, English language novels from 23 to 2005, Christopher Hitchens and Toby Young, who are two highly respected critics, said it was a brilliant comic novel. The New York Review of Books says it is the finest and funniest comic novel of the 20th century. Okay? Why was it not a sign? Previous FSP students hated it. Um, while it's set in an English-speaking country in fairly recent times, many aspects of it are so foreign to you that basically you're saying, I can't relate to it. Um, the FSP uses academic satire as a vehicle for critical thinking, but it's not the case that you have to become an expert upon the subject matter that is covered. So therefore, I didn't feel too bad about leaving out this important novel. Recommendations, if you want to understand recent history of the campus novel, you want to read Lucky Jim. Read it if you want to experience a marvelous stylist describing some of the most cringeworthy social scenes imaginable. Read it if you're particularly interested in British society in the period shortly after World War II. But if you want a rollicking satire of many of the most ridiculous aspects of contemporary higher education, there are more recent academic satires and ones that are set in the US that will be more likely to satisfy your interests. <laughs> <laughs>